Amino acids can also be charged. There are five of these, two that are acidic and three that are basic. Back to our NCC with the R group in the middle. Amino acids that are acidic have a carboxyl group. There are two of these. One has a CH2 and a carboxyl group. It can, of course, lose an H+, and that makes it negative. So acidic amino acids are negatively charged. They lose that hydrogen and become negative. There are two of these. Both have the word acid in the name. Aspartic acid, ASP, or D, when we use a single letter, because A is already taken by another amino acid, has the structure I just showed you, CH2, C double bond O. The hydroxyl group loses the H to become negative. And the other is glutamic acid, which is GLU or E, because the G is taken by another amino acid. It's the same, except it has a second CH2 and loses that hydrogen to become negative. R groups can also be basic. There are three of these. Their structure is a little more complicated. Two of them have a series of several CH2s. The exact number isn't going to matter to us. And they end in an amino group. So of course they can pick up H plus and they wind up positively charged. So this amino group makes them basic because of that positive charge that's attracted. Two of these are lysine, L-Y-S-K, because the L is already taken by another amino acid, and arginine, A-R-G or R, because arginine starts with the sound R. And these two differ just by the number of CH2s that they have. One has one more CH2 than the other. The third of the basic amino acids is histidine. Histidine has a little bit more complex structure. It's got several nitrogens, doesn't have an amino group, but has several nitrogens, and those can attract, in combination, a plus charge to be positively charged.